Heather, you're exactly right. You can't come to the College World Series and leave 11 base runners on the pass and expect to win many baseball games. We go to 5 News Sports' Bobby Swafford, who has the details. The video tells you all the answers you need to know. You could come up with catchy slogans all you want, but a hog pile in the middle of Bomb Stadium says it all. We talked about it before the game started, the three keys to the game for Arkansas. They dominated all three phases. Brandon Allen looked healthy. He didn't turn the football over. Texas did. Arkansas's running game established themselves, especially in the second and third quarters. And on the flip side, Arkansas forced turnovers. Tyrone Swoops throws a couple picks, and that led to a big, big win for Arkansas. And now all right, guys, you've heard about bracketology. This is swathology. We're going to talk about some of the closer games. East Michigan State and Georgia. Michigan State's mm -hmm. been there forever, like 20 some odd hundred That's years right. in a row. You got to go with Michigan yeah, State. Yeah, got to go with Michigan State. Let's move Tom Izzo and the Spartans over. Georgia's one of those teams from the SEC. Could have been in, could have been out, also underachieving like the Spartans to move on. Oh. Coming off the bye week, the Arkansas offense is facing a tough challenge in the Florida defense. The Gators pass defense ranked number two in the nation in both yards allowed per game and points allowed. And what Florida does really well is they disguise coverages. It looks like the receiver and the cornerback are man up man to man at the top of the screen. Missouri is going to try to sneak the running back into the flats behind the outgoing receiver. Problem is this man is going to be able to jump the route and we put it in the motion. He picks it off and it's a clear cakewalk to the end zone for the Florida defense. Football program that's gone under this much turmoil over the last 36 months is comical. You're talking about Petrino and obviously Brett Bielema coming in, but to get back to back shutout wins, something this football team hadn't done since 2002, and now you've got a chance to beat another ranked team next week in Missouri, a chance to get the seven wins when most people thought three or four wins this season was going to be the ceiling. But look at this guy. This guy is wearing head to toe squirrel outfits. <laughs> Prairie Grove hasn't lost to a team in Class 4A in more than two years. And Danny Absher's team made sure that didn't happen again tonight. Central Arkansas Christian had made the trip to the number one seed from the 4A1. Plenty of fireworks to go around for the Tigers. And Zeke Laird, well, he's showing off why he's having a big year. 29-yard pass to Demarcus Cooper. That's going to set up a score. 6-0 Prairie Grove has a lead. Next drive, Laird, a one-yard touchdown run. It's 12-0. Prairie Grove. Now late in the first quarter, Tigers, they can do it on the ground too. Kyle Sam's going to break off a 38-yarder here. Prairie Grove had no rust from being off last week. It didn't seem to matter at anything they wanted to. Now this one on fourth down though, Laird going to hit Anthony Johnson. A little foreshadowing, mainly because I have the shot sheet in front of me. How about another score? 20 to nothing Prairie Grove. And you want to see a big number? Put up that final score. 61 points for Prairie Grove. They're moving on. There was a very small glimmer of hope that Drake Greenlaw could return for the end of the regular season, but that glimmer has now faded away. The sophomore linebacker is going to miss the next two games for the Hogs as he's recovering from a broken foot that he suffered early in the Alabama game. Arkansas was thin at linebacker before the Fayetteville native went down, but Brett Bielema said this is an injury that you just can't rush. He won't run yet this week. Um, I doubt we would be able to work him in the next. Arkansas basketball was looking for their third straight win to start the new season, but the favorite from the Sun Belt Conference was in the way. Five News Sports Director Bobby Swaffer joins us with a look at the game. Bobby. Well, guys, Arkansas coach Mike Anderson thought they would be tested by UT Arlington, but there's no way the Hogs coach thought they'd be pushed as hard as they were tonight. Even though this team was favored to win their conference, well, they weren't expected to do this. UT Arlington hit 12 three-pointers. That's good. Moses Kingsley with the block there. Arkansas trailed by 11 points at the half. Not a huge night offensively for Kingsley, but he throws that one down. This might be the play of the game, though. Jalen Barford with the steal and the slam. Arkansas went on a 10-0 run. They took the lead. Anton Beard knocks it down there. Arkansas outscored the Mavericks. 39-24 after the half. They win it by four. Barford led the way with 17 points. Beard had 12 off the bench. Not a great showing. Arkansas shot just 39%, but they survive. Here's Mike Anderson after the game. You know, I'd rather have a, a raggedy car. The sights and sounds on Friday night is what makes high school football so special. But Charleston defensive tackle Jacob Johnson doesn't get the chance to hear them because J.J. was born deaf. And just because he couldn't hear the crowd chant his name, that doesn't make what he's done, especially at Lamar a few weeks ago, any less special. 
Oh, it was unreal. I just, I was yelling at him to run. I didn't know what if he knew what to do or not. And when he scored, it was unbelievable. When a guy dropped it, like caught it off of him, I grabbed the ball. And everybody told me to run, and I couldn't hear him. So I just found the ball in my hand, and I just took off running and made a touchdown. JJ didn't hear the crowd roar as his interception returned for a touchdown, capped a 31-6 win against Lamar. That was the first time the senior had ever scored, but JJ didn't know if he'd ever get that chance. It was hard because when my parents thought when I was deaf, they didn't know until I was three, so I was just born deaf, and then after that, uh, they felt horrible because they didn't know if I can disabled can do anything like play sports. He's been dealt some cards that you know a lot of people hadn't you know, that I haven't been dealt and I you know I can't speak for what it's like to overcome that obstacle that he's overcome but uh, he's excelled in every aspect of his life from the classroom to his personal life uh, and, and it's carried over to this football field and he's done a marvelous job for us. It goes without saying that JJ's had obstacles to overcome on the football field but his best friend has been right beside him literally the entire way. Me and JJ, I mean, we're real tight. We do everything together. We do have signs because of his hearing problems, and he don't always get the signs, so I have to help him remember his plays and tell him where to go with hand signals. Charleston finished the regular season a perfect 10-0. and JJ's fourth on the team with 67 tackles. The Tigers are expected to finish a top Class 3A this year, but what Jacob Johnson has done is far from what was expected. See what he's done and know where he's come from. Uh, it's a huge, a huge testament to that kid. Um, you know, all our coaches are talking about. You know, they're talking about our defense, but when they talk about our defense, they talk about him. Uh, he's got a motor that goes, and he's just the word we describe JJ is relentless. Uh, he's got a relentless effort and pursuit to the ball, uh, and just playing above what we ever pictured him and, and dreamed of him playing. McKay Gregson serves as Prairie Grove's manager. He usually sits on the sideline just watching his team as he suffers from 22Q11 deletion syndrome. It causes autistic-like behaviors and just make things more difficult for McKay. But last Friday was no normal senior night. Despite trailing by nine points in the closing seconds, the home crowd started to chant for McKay. Then the crowd erupted as Prairie Grove coach Steve Edmiston told McKay to go check in. It felt great. Um, it felt good to come in. Um, both sides were cherry for me, and I never got an experience like that ever in my life. Just getting to see him out there, just when he's been with us for three years, uh, always being there with us, always shooting with us like that, uh, it was awesome. McKay walked onto the floor with the crowd still chanting his name. With the clock running down, though, his three-pointer bounced off the front of the rim and into the hands of Farmington's Jeremy Muller. It looked like the game was over. Then Muller put the rivalry aside and gave McKay another chance. It was just kind of natural for me to throw it back to him uh, and help him get another shot because, I mean, it just seemed like the right thing to do for him. McKay drained it. Uh, I had no words. I was speechless, and I was really emotional after the game because I was really happy. Lynn Gregson can be heard on the broadcast going crazy, like any proud father would. But he wasn't just proud of what his son did. Pure sportsmanship in class was the only thing I could think of whenever Jeremy threw the ball back. And uh, you just, especially with this rivalry, it's so intense and both teams want to win so badly. And to watch the sportsmanship was just amazing. McKay was able to bring two communities together as one, but it almost didn't happen. Like most coaches, Edmiston was caught up in the pressure and the atmosphere. After all, he was about to drop a critical game to his biggest rival. But in stepped the Tigers cheerleader. I just kept thinking, he's going to just shoo me away. He is going to tell me, I don't need anybody on the sideline. This is my game. He just he instantly put McKay in. I didn't need, even need to keep talking. He just interrupted me and put him in. If only for a few seconds, this rivalry was put on the back burner. To show you what one person can bring two communities together, what that one person can, can show the, the two of us to come together, that, that's just awesome. And you don't see that a lot of places. In Prairie Grove, Bobby Swafford, 5 News Sports. Lou Ann Davis is your typical high school senior, but her path to this point in life has been anything but typical. Started passing out this, um, like my sophomore going into my junior year. Davis was a leading scorer for the Howell Lady Lions, 
but she had been taken to the hospital on three different occasions after passing out while playing in the game she loves. It was not if she would go down, it was pretty much a time, matter of when she would go down. Chris Brown was faced with the tough decision to play her or make her sit on the bench. We kept getting doctor's release or release from the doctor saying that she could play. It sure seemed like to me that that wasn't what it was, that she was fighting for her life, but uh, I wasn't a medical doctor. So Davis was back out on the floor. In late January 2014, Davis was set for her final appearance in the annual LaFleur County Tournament as a senior. She took the floor against Hevener. Then it all stopped. Honestly, I just thought it was like another passing out thing. I'd just be back on the floor and oh, I'd be like, oh, I'll be back in a couple games. And then when they told me I had to have open heart surgery. It was just like, oh, my basketball career is over. Davis had to undergo experimental surgery at Children's Hospital in Little Rock. It was something that they hadn't seen before. Her left coronary artery was connected in a wrong area and somehow it was still working. It was a congenital heart defect that would cause Luann's heart to shut down the blood flow if she produced too much adrenaline. Basketball almost killed her. It also saved her life. If she hadn't been playing, uh, she wouldn't made it this summer. Uh, that, that gave her only till the summer to live without the surgery. Davis came through the surgery with the precision of a well-executed free throw. But now her senior season had come and gone. She missed senior day. She missed out on prom. But mom wasn't going to let her daughter miss out for good. We made a decision with school's help for her to redo her senior year with um, a medical hardship. Lou Ann Davis got a second chance to do those things for the first time. It really meant the world to me, honestly, like being able to come back with my team and being able to play ball again, doing something that I love. It's just, it's just amazing. The LaFleur County Tournament was the site where Davis went down the last time. It's an event her family will never forget. But what happened in last month's tournament will certainly be the memory that they choose to hold on to. Davis helped Howe win the tournament title. She was also named co-MVP. She captured the heart of all of people, all of the fans in LaFleur County. I get teary out every time I watch her play because uh, it's a miracle. It was just a really emotional experience for me. It was, it was just so amazing to be able to go what I went through and be able to actually play again and play well. In Howe, Bobby Swafford, 5 News Sports.